Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This cataract appears like a posterior polar cataract. I did a lot of blunders in this case. Let us observe this surgery. It is true that we learn more from our mistakes than from uneventful surgeries. By this time, the main incision has been made and two sideboard incisions have been made about three clock hours away from the main incision. Viscoelastic substance has been used to fill up the anterior chamber and now a capsular excess is being done with uterita forceps. All these are routine steps and this is okay. There is no problem till now. And now, I didn't want to do hydro dissection in this case, so I go deep into the substance of the lens mass and do a hydro delineation. And I remove the central part of the lens mass. This is a very soft cataract, so the it came out easily. And now this mistake starts. I am trying to aspirate this without hydrodissection and here I go to so much periphery. This is blunder number one and here I probably touched the posterior capsule and here I have made a rent already. This is blunder number two. So, without hydrodissection, I tried to lift off the epinuclear sheet from the posterior capsule with high vacuum. This is not a mistake. This is a blunder. And I must not repeat this in my surgical career. I'm surprised and you will be more surprised than even after three decades of surgical experience we do such blunders and now I'm trying to correct trying to repair the damage I've taken viscoat from Alcon have plugged the rent and now I'm trying to pull the epinuclear sheet and here this is blunder number three I tried to pull the sheet even when I saw the rent here blunder number four I am pulling the vitreous strands so this has become uh, like a vicious cycle. I am doing one blunder after another. You must not do this. You must not pull the vitreous strands. And now the proper corrective measures start. I have injected a lot of viscoat, pushed the Vitreous stands away and have removed the epinucleus and come out. Some more viscoat and some more here to open the fornix, to open the equator of the capsular bag. And now I do some dry aspiration of the cortex from 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock and then I come to 3 o'clock so I do some dry aspiration of the cortex inject viscoat again here in this region at 7 o'clock do some more dry aspiration 
it is a good step because if we do vitectomy, anterior vitectomy, without aspirating this cortex, a lot of this cortical matter will drop into the vitreous cavity. So if we do, if we dry aspirate some cortex, there will be less droppings. Now first, I, without irrigation, I am removing some vitreous strands and here this is another mistake we should not go through the main incision and this will cause more vitreous prolapse through the main wound there is already some prolapse so I go through the side port and do antivitectomy should go little behind the posterior capsule and here I am hooking the vitreous strands but a lot of vitreous strands are still there at the main wound we will see that in a short time I didn't realize this at this stage at this stage I thought I have done a nice vitrectomy The vitectomy part is almost unedited, so you can see each and every step a little fast forwarded. This surgery took 25 minutes. I have reduced the time by 10 minutes by but I tried to show all the important steps and here I tried to aspirate the cortex first it didn't come so I again went to cutter mode and did cutting and aspiration and now some cortex is there at 10 o'clock and some more at 2 o'clock I'm going to remove this by this instrument, a uh, 23G Simco cannula. Yes, we must take care, we must not catch hold of vitreous strands and pull. In such cases, we must here it is. See the vitreous strand. We can easily hold it with the cotton tipped Jensen bar and cut it with a vana scissor. I go again through the side port, do some more vitectomy here, try to hook the areas where vitreous prolapse occurred and do some more vitectomy. A nice anterior vitectomy must be done and in this case there is no droppings of lens matter into the vitreous cavity and that is a good aspect of the surgery. Now, in this case, I am going to enlarge the main wound to about 3.5 millimeter so that I can go inside the anterior chamber and deliver the lens at the proper place. And this is the intraocular lens selected. This is sensor multipiece from Janssen and Janssen. This lens, the advantage of this lens is you can place it in the sulcus without optic capture and the lens uh, remains nicely centered optic capture is not required for this lens but if one opts for optic capture that is good 
Now here the lens has been loaded in the cartridge and the cartridge goes inside the interior chamber. The cartridge is rotated clockwise so that the haptic goes into the sulcus. We can place the haptics over the iris also but in this case I had a very good rim of the anterior capsule, anterior capsular rim inferiorly so I placed the lens directly into the sulcus. Some more viscoat over the lens and now I hold the trailing haptic with Macpherson's forceps and place the trailing haptic in the sulcus. Now the lens is rotated a bit. The haptics are at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And now I remove the visco from the anterior chamber from the front aspect of the intraocular lens by this Simco cannula. But I must not use the Simco to remove the visco from behind the lens. So what I do, I take the cutter again, go through the side ports and remove the visco by cutting and aspirating, not aspirating and cutting first cut and then aspirate and thus I remove all the visco from the anterior vitreous and from behind the lens. And this is we are towards the end of the surgery inject a big air bubble and now inject pilocarpine to constrict the people. This is going to be the test for any vitreous strand. If there is any vitreous strand, the people will be picked, it will not be round. This is a suture placed at the main wound with 10 O nylon. In this case, since I have enlarged the main wound after anterior vitectomy, I must put a suture to close this wound. And this is how the suture is being placed, two loops and then one through and then another through. And now trim the sutures closed close to the knot and then take a Macpherson's forceps hold this suture and bury the knot into the tissue and now during this final lavage I note something there is a vitreous strand or cortical fiber at 10 o'clock. Whatever it is, I must remove this. So I took the cutter again and trimmed the strand from 10 o'clock. This is moxifloxacin. Now I hydrated the side boards by the moxifloxacin itself and concluded the case. Now let us observe these postdoc pictures taken one week after surgery. The pupil is round and central. The anterior chamber is quiet, intraocular pressure is normal. Visual acuity is 6 by 6 with optical correction. And this is the dilated pupil and see the centration of the intraocular lens without optic capture. This is optic nerve head, and this is the macula, and this is the optical coherence tomography scan. The patient is very happy, and I am happy that in spite of making a lot of blunders, I have 
got good results because the damage was repaired in a nice way.